Hi there guys, welcome to Guitar Interactive Magazine. My name's Tom Quayle, and today I've got this big beast of an amp here. This is the Jet City 333, that's the name of the brand, and it's the 5212RC, or JCA 512, uh, 5212, sorry, RC. JCA obviously standing for Jet City Amplification. As I say, the 333 is part of the brand, and these are basically designed by Soldano. So you can think of these as being the uh, more budget-minded version of the Soldano amps that everybody's heard of um, that can cost serious, serious amounts of cash. This is much more kind of um, wallet-friendly, um, budget-minded kind of pricing, but still actually really, really well built. Um, obviously, I'll go through the specs in a minute, but you can see immediately it's a big amp, solidly built, very nicely constructed, uh, nice kind of design on logo. Um, it just looks great. It's, it looks like it's going to survive uh, a beating on the road, basically. So that's the first thing I'd say about it. In terms of the construction, uh, solid steel chassis, uh, void-free hardwood for the, um, the actual um, build here. It's got two, uh, one by, sorry, two 12-inch eminent speakers in there. They're not too specific about which eminent speakers they are but Eminence is a great brand, so um, the speakers internally sound really, really good. Obviously 2x12, it's not a stereo setup or anything. Um, there's an effects loop on the back, but um, it's not for running stereo effects or anything, but certainly sounds good, adds a lot more beef to the bottom end and power. 50 watt amp, powered by six 12AX7s in the preamp stage, which is quite a lot, so there's quite a bit of drive on tap and two 6L6s in the power stage, adding to that 50 watt output. So this, with it being 6L6s, um, it's got a great drive channel and a good clean channel. And the clean channel is actually um, the Soldano circuit uh, that you'll find on the Lucky 13, which is um, so, you know, a really nice high-end Soldano amp. So you've got the best of both worlds here for a very good price. You've got a nice clean channel with independent EQ, bass, middle and treble volume. The gain is set wide open for that particular circuit. So it doesn't actually crunch too much as you turn the volume up. You're not actually adding too much gain to the circuit, just volume, which means you've got a ton of clean headroom. And what you'll find is as you move on to the gain channel, um, with it being 6L6 tubes, it's got lots of bottom end. And as you back the gain down, you can go from a pretty sparkly clean and very lightly overdriven tone all the way up to um, pretty kind of heavy rock kind of territory. Certainly not metal, although as you heard in the opening um, playing section of this video, uh, I boosted it with a uh, distortion pedal just with the level engaged, no gain from the pedal at all. And you can get quite a fair amount of saturation from it and it will accept that very, very nicely uh, via the front end. So the actual unit itself, in terms of um, layout, the two channels are divided just here. So we've got uh, volume, as in, uh, no, as I mentioned before, no gain here, just pure volume. Bass, middle, and treble, okay, which is standard three-band EQ. Nice EQ here, seem to work very nicely in conjunction with each other, these controls. And as you'll hear, they're pretty musical, uh, not over excessive in the lower and the higher end. Uh, of the controls. Uh, construction wise, they feel very, very smooth, very nice. They don't feel like they're going to fall off. You know, some uh, budget minded amps at uh, this price range sound great, but feel like they're going to fall apart as soon as you touch them. This feels very solid indeed. Easy to read what's going on. Nice big white um, print around the, um, the dials themselves, so you can dial things in and remember the settings nice and easily, see things easily on stage. Okay, the uh, dirt channel is here. Okay, so we've got gain this time. Uh, fair amount of gain on tap, as mentioned, not an insane level. Actually, just what you need, really, um, because it's a fairly simple, straightforward kind of uh, construction in terms of the amp, so there's no weird little mini switches or anything or pull dials. Uh, the kind of vibe that these guys are going for is pure tone. Um, they don't want to kind of complicate the circuit with loads and loads of buttons and dials and strange things that you can pull out and push and so on and so forth. Um, so it's a pretty simple layout, which obviously means usability or user-friendliness is very easy. So we've got gain, bass, middle and treble again, independent for this particular channel, which is always nice. Uh, volume, self-explanatory. And then tube buffered reverb, three springs, very nice to have and a presence control for dialing in some top end depending on which guitar you're using. This particular guitar is very dark sounding, being a big heavy uh, mahogany bodied instrument with a mahogany neck. So you can dial back in some uh, super high end frequencies if you so desire. You can see I've dialed that up quite high for my playing demo. Um, it's also got the effects loop on the back which is also tube buffered. So there's a lot of tubes going on in here. So it weighs quite a bit, as you can imagine. Handle on the top, would have been nice to have handles on the side just for portability if you're doing a two-man carry job. But it's not excessively large, so you could lift it two-man from underneath here. That would be absolutely fine. But you can lift it uh, as a single person, as our cameraman found out. 
didn't break his back, but he probably wasn't too happy afterwards, but um, it is pretty heavy, just something to bear in mind. And then to finish the design, we've got standby and a power on off there, uh, just nice and easy, nothing too complex. Good solid switches and the blue LED obviously is helping us to determine uh, when the amps on and off. So it's very easy to see what's going on on stage. Uh, nice design, uh, sort of modern-ish kind of look to this. It's not a vintagey looking amp. Actually looks a little bit, I say it's not vintage, it looks a little bit 80s actually, um, like some of the solid state amps from the 80s, but it is all tube. Um, the little eminence logo down in the bottom right hand corner looks cool. Uh, input here, designed by Soldano. Then round the back, you've got a couple of uh, 4 ohm and 1 8 ohm outputs. And the two speakers internally are 16 ohms each, so obviously that makes an 8 ohm output. And it's very easy, those just plug uh, in and out via the included uh, cable. So what we'll do is we'll start with the clean channel and uh, as usual I'll just let you hear uh, what the EQ controls do and the volume control. You're not going to hear a lot of difference, we'll start with that volume control as I dial it up. We'll start on the neck position of this uh, guitar, it's a humbucker. Um, so we're just over halfway, let's set everything reasonably flat as people do with these kind of things and have a listen. <laughs> So nice sound, 6L6 is adding lots of bottom end there and thump and uh, lots of clarity as well. As we increase the volume, we'll try to do this without clipping our microphone and killing our ears because it is very loud in here. So as I'm not playing too hard there, it's not clipping, but it will break up slightly if you push it really hard like that. Obviously stick a pedal in front of it and it'll break up as much as you want. Um, but again, it's not too thumpy, uh, nice and in the bottom end and nice and clear on top as well. Okay, so if we uh, increase the bass, I'll just again do the usual thing where I sweep the control. So again, nice and musical there. It's not too kind of um, muddy on the bottom end when it's all the way up. But if you have a very bassy guitar, which this is, you can dial that out if you need to. Mids. Again, fairly subtle, but very musical. Very, very useful range of EQ. And then the treble. Again, just the same kind of thing, basically. A very musical, very fun to play, clean channel. I would actually say this is the channel I prefer on this amp, although the crunch channel is very good, as you'll hear in a minute. But this is a very, very nice clean channel, which is kind of emitted from a lot of um, more budget-minded amplifiers, especially budget-minded tube amplifiers. This is a definite bonus to this amplifier, really nice sounding channel. Quickly let you hear the reverb on this clean channel, which is foot switchable in and out. So we've got reverb and crunch down here. Not a lot to look at really, but um, yeah, it does the job very nicely, well constructed. So you've heard the reverb, here it is without it. Just dry. And then the tube buffered uh, three spring reverb. Okay, if we crank that all the way, it's fairly extreme. Nice spring reverb. So a pretty huge tail on there, um, but if you need that much reverb, it's nice to have the option. And it sounds really super smooth. It's obviously not a digital reverb, so it's got a real pure sound to it. Okay, crunch channel. Okay, down to the bridge pickup. Gain set just over halfway. Let's bring these back down to the middle. Okay, and we'll bring the presence down to the middle as well and let you hear that in this, in, in this demo. So this is halfway up on the crunch channel, no boost in front of the amp or anything. So with humbuckers, halfway up on the gain, fair old amount of gain, I mean for rhythm playing. Really great sound, really, really nice. Uh, again, with the humbuckers, lots of clarity on there. If you're using single coils like a strap, there's probably a little bit too much brightness. Uh, the treble and the presence control do a great job of rolling that off. So let's start with those. If I bring the treble down. Very, very musical, even in the bottom end of the uh, range there. And then all the way up. Yeah, okay, still musical, it's not too harsh, not too fizzy. 
sign of a good amp. The presence control, again, just adding in some super high frequencies, so. Very good for smoothing out the high end uh, if you want a liquidy lead tone. Okay, so the mids, if we uh, crank those, again, have a listen to what happens. We get that nice honky nasally sound, again, helped by those 6L6 output tubes. Loads of sustain, which is great, because the gain's not running that hot at the moment. And it's nice and touch sensitive. Certainly listening to these tonal characteristics so far, I wouldn't have been able to make a good guess at the price of this amp, which is always a good sign. If no one had told me, I'd have probably thought the price was double at least. Um, so that's a very good sign. As we roll those back out again, so we've got a scooped kind of sound now. Again, still lots of sustain. Obviously helped by the great guitar. Um, okay, and then the bass. So we'll bring the mids back up again so we don't kind of colour the sound too much in that way. So again, nice and musical. You can't really overload the tone circuitry of this amp and make it sound muddy or boomy or horrible. You're going to struggle to dial in a really bad tone. Oh, the only thing really you're going to be able to do is dial in maybe too much top end for particular guitars. That would be very easily done, but you could do that on any amp. The great thing is the combination of the bass and the mids, they're not giving you any tones that are really bad. Uh, everything seems to be pretty good and musical, and I've not really spent too much time fiddling around with this, but I've yet to find a particularly bad tone. Um, so that's the EQ section. Uh, if we now crank the gain all the way, there's slightly less than some guys might want, but again, that's never really an issue because if the gain sounds good all the way through its range, and I'll show you the lower range soon, if you stick a pedal in front of it, it's just going to make it more saturated, which is obviously, um, you know, fit for lead tones. Unless you're going for that kind of metal sound, in which case you'd never go for an amp like this anyway. You'd go for something with, you know, ridiculous number of tubes in it that's super high gain. Um, then, you know, this is going to suit most purposes absolutely fine. So here it is cranked. Again, bridge pickup humbucker. If you've got single coils, obviously we'd, there'd be less gain than this, and it'd be slightly less tight sounding. <laughs> So a great bluesy or uh, rock kind of lead tone. And if you wanted more saturation again, we've got the pedal down here. I've got the level about halfway up the drive, it's just non-existent. There is no drive on, uh, the drive on the pedal, but we haven't actually engaged it. So this is just literally a transparent boost. An absolute ton of sustain available there. Now again, just to highlight this, if we crank the mids, a little bit more presence and treble. Uh, the volume I'm going to keep where it is because the volume's not adding too much to the equation here because obviously we're using the uh, the gain. And this is the same circuit, by the way, that the it's the Soldano Crunch circuit. Okay, obviously the innards of the amp and stuff are different to a high-end Soldano, but it's the same circuit that you've got going on here. So it's a very very high quality crunch tone uh, or lead tone in this case. <laughs> probably too much overdrive for most people, but at least you know you've got the option of boosting and getting that kind of level. Possibly a nice addition might have been a boost switch that would give you some preamp gain boost, uh, pre-gain stage. But again, that's adding things to the, uh, the circuitry that you know are just possibly gonna color the tone, and that's not what this amp is about. As I say, it's about simple construction, keeping everything as pure in terms of the signal path as possible, which is a real nice um, sort of ethic for you know, as I say, more budget-minded amps. So, pretty impressive. This uh, Jet City uh, 5212 is a pretty impressive beast all around. Maybe if it was a little bit lighter, 
in terms of the weight, it might be even more attractive, but certainly at this price range, you don't normally associate this level of tone and um, almost boutique sensibilities in terms of the tone and circuit construction with uh, this level of price. So very impressive. Okay, so that's the uh, 5212 RC. Let's have a look at the other amp now in the uh, range that we've got for you in this review. Okay, so here's the little brother. This is the Jet City or JCA 2212C. Okay, um, this one is a one by 12. Very similar in terms of the construction externally, obviously not internally, it's very different internally, which I'll go through in a minute. We've got the steel chassis, and then we've got the uh, hardwood void-free um, uh, construction on the outside here. Again, finished to a similar kind of level, very nice level. Obviously weighs less, still quite heavy though. It's about 19 kilograms, um, pretty, pretty heavy beast. Uh, but that's a good sign in terms of the construction, possibly not for your back, but a good sign in terms of uh, how well it's put together. Same kind of logo, and then we've got the Eminence down there. This is a Jet City custom made Eminence driver. As I say, one by 12. Extension cab outs on the back, has a couple of those, and uh, an effects loop. Uh, it's solid state rectifier on this one, and there's no tube reverb on here at all. Uh, okay, so the other big differences here, apart from it being obviously smaller in a 1x12 as opposed to a 2x12, is in the circuitry. This is uh, five 12x7s and a couple of EL84s providing 20 watts of power. So significantly less power, but it's still insanely loud in the room. Uh, very, very loud amp indeed. So this is perfect for clubs or, you know, this will outdo any drummer for certain. Um, the, the biggest difference internally in terms of the circuitry, apart from the tubes, is the way the actual channels are laid out. This has a normal and an overdrive channel, which you can think of as being a crunch and a high gain or lead channel. It does do clean sounds, it does quite nice clean sounds. Not as good as the previous amp, in my opinion, because of the lack of 6L6s and the lack of that uh, Lucky 13 style Soldano circuitry. Uh, but the two channels with the gain anywhere near or past two is going to give you reasonably high levels of gain, certainly getting up to the level that the previous amp finished at. So they're quite different. Don't think of these as being the same amp as a 1x12 and a 2x12 variation. Uh, they do sound, as you'll hear in a minute, sorry, very, very different indeed. Um, shared EQ as well. So uh, bass, middle and treble with 1x12s where there's just less space. There's not a lot you can do about that. Um, but obviously slight disadvantage or a big disadvantage depending on what your viewpoint is in terms of the flexibility. And then we've got uh, the master volumes here. Previously we had the actual gain here. These are like the preamp gain. Then there's the master volumes and the presence control. Obviously no reverb control. And then standby and off. Okay, so fairly similar. Um, let's start with the, uh, what they're calling the crunch channel here. On the manual and on the website, they call this the normal channel, but obviously it's labeled crunch on here, so that gives you an idea straight away of what's going on. We're gonna be into fairly reasonable gain territory straight away. Now what I'm gonna do with this is back it off to about one to start with and increase the volume on that crunch channel. Um, and uh, the foot switch down here, it's a single foot switch to allow me to switch between the two channels. And as with the previous amp, you can't switch channels on the amp but how often are you going to be doing that when you've got a foot switch in front of you? Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you the clean side of things first. And the only way you're going to get a clean sound is by either rolling the, the gain down on the amp pretty low, you'll hear with humbuckers it's very easily driven, and, or having the crunch up in terms of the gain and rolling the volume down on the guitar. So here's the first option. And you can probably hear there's a light bit of drive going on in the background if I hit quite hard. It's very hard to get a pure clean tone with these kind of pickups, um, and I can't split these into single coils at all. So, you know, it's a pretty kind of basic setup going on with this guitar, as fantastic as it is. Um, if I was to crank that to about three and back down the volume a little bit on the amp. You can hear on that neck pickup we're already into crunch territory on the treble pickup or the bridge pickup. Oops, if I had the volume up. It's already pretty crunchy. We're into kind of mild rock territory there. But with this being a tube amp, all tube, if we go back to that neck position and roll the volume down. Pretty acceptable clean tone. It's not that kind of bell-like uh, quality that we have from the 6L6s, but it works. 
Uh, so certainly that's something to bear in mind with this. You're not gonna have tons and tons of clean headroom. And as I increase the volume of the crunch channel, it gets insanely, insanely loud. There's actually quite a nice responsive, very dynamic, uh, sort of thicker, woollier clean tone. Um, so you can go for that sound if you want to, but for sparkly, sparkly highs, you probably want to either use single coils um, or back the gain right down on the amp and just have less volume, essentially. So with that said, let's increase the crunch. We'll go halfway up, uh, back down to the neck pick, uh, sorry, the bridge pickup and listen to how much gain we've got from this particular channel. Uh, my EQ controls are set pretty flat, just a little boost on each. Presence just under halfway and we get this. <laughs> Okay, so quite a lot of gain. If we increase it all of the way, this will just give you an idea. This is basically uh, way higher gain than you had on the previous amp already. So you might be wondering why is there an overdrive channel when that crunch channel has a huge amount of overdrive on it already, but what the overdrive channel does is tighten up the sound significantly and add more and more and more saturation as we increase the gain. So if I now switch over using the foot switch to the overdrive channel and we have it about just under halfway, here's what we had before. And now the overdrive channel. Just tighten things up in the bottom end, slightly less woollier. Um, and uh, a little bit, as I say, tighter in general, um, a little bit more top end EQ wise. Again, let me uh, let you hear the comparison. Slightly more modern sound. This is not the same circuit as in the previous amp, obviously, this is a different circuit, um, but it's pretty nice sounding, I have to say. Okay, increasing even further. You're into that sustain forever kind of territory. A little bit too saturated for my taste, but it's nice to have the variation and be able to actually dial in that much overdrive. So that gives you a flavor of that channel. Uh, let's back that off and then have a look at the EQ. So again, like the previous amp, very musical, slightly more subtle than you'll find in other budget-minded kind of amps, um, you know, because of the simplicity of the circuitry. The bass. Very useful for tightening up or fattening up the sound as required. Again, depending on the guitar that you've got. Not an insane amount of flub when you increase the bass. It still retains a very musical character, even with uh, all mahogany uh, guitar with humbuckers. Okay, and then the mids, similar kind of thing. So you can do the scooped thing if you want to. Um, it will get you into metal territory, especially with super high gain or active humbuckers on there, which this isn't. Well, they are high, high gain, high output, but they're not active. Um, and then the treble. So if you want that cutting sound, that's available as well. And again, not too piercing as you turn it all the way up. One of the biggest things that I think these amps excel in uh, is the EQ is very, very, very nice and musical indeed. Uh, presence, you know, again, adding hot, super high end frequencies if you need to cut a little bit more, so. And roll off, dep again, depending on the guitar that you've got. So you really can match the EQ to the guitar. Um, so again, nice amp, really good. I prefer the, the more slightly more expensive and uh, bigger 2x12 model with the uh, clean channel. That's my preference. You might find this suits your build better in terms of the amount of drive available and the flexibility of the overdrive sounds. Uh, the clean ch channel on this, if you call it a clean channel, not quite as flexible and not quite as good, but you know, it's a horses for courses. Still a great amp, 
uh, good sound, well constructed. So that's the Jet City amplification uh, designed by Soldano, made in China. But again, that's, that's not a bad thing these days at all. Uh, so go and check them out. They're available all over the place, these amps. They're uh, pretty easy to get hold of. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the review and I will see you next time.